Well, the world <coughs> is not a happy place. It is not a safe place. And uh, we as a race are hurtling ourselves toward the edge of precipice. We are heading towards extinction. And the signs are very clear. The warning bells are ringing ever so often, so much more frequently and so much louder. Look at the ecological disasters. So much havoc, so much devastation. Look at the diseases. Look at the crop failures, the climate change, financial crisis that you too have experienced, out of which there are those who say that Denmark will emerge and that you will, in the coming year, experience a positive growth. I pray for you, and I'm certain that uh, this will happen. <clears throat> Look at the conflicts. Look at the inequities in the world today. Even as many people have risen out of poverty in the last 15 years or so, especially after the Millennium Development Goals were pursued, adopted by the United Nations, we have over a billion people, 1.2 billion people to be precise, who live in extreme poverty. That is, who earn less than $1.25 a day. Over a billion people live in the slums in the cities. And the rural urban migration that is the experience of most developing countries is bringing in more people into the cities that are already overcrowded. And we already have a billion people living in the slums with not even the basic services. In my own region of South Asia Pacific, there are over 18 million children who are out of, out of school. In 2011, Three million children under the age of five died for preventable reasons. Energy crisis, resource depletion, and among the many things that we have reasons to worry about is water shortage. I come from the Himalayas. Bhutan is located in what is sometimes referred to as the water table of Asia. I live right in the reservoir. And my constituency in Bhutan suffers from shortage of water. There are villages that have no water. And there are no sources from which to extract. Water is drying everywhere. And we can be certain that uh, water will be the cause for the Third World War. And beyond that, it'll not, you know, it'll not only be war among nations, that it will Water will be the cause for war, conflict within the families, between neighbors, and within and among, between cities. Look at what happened in Japan. Even as the world is suffering from energy crisis, energy shortage, both the developed as well as the developing, we have discovered that 
nuclear energy, one sure source is not safe. And nuclear facilities of any kind are dangerous, especially with escalating conflicts and the possibility of nuclear capability getting into the hands of people who cannot be held accountable. So it's a dangerous world. And uh, what is good is that the world is now beginning to agree that there is so much that is wrong and that we need to put our act together, that we need to get together, that no country on its own can respond and solve these problems. And so I'm happy to say that there is now a serious debate initiated by the United Nations on the search for a collective vision, an alternative development strategy, a set of sustainable, inclusive, and holistic goals that we can pursue after 2015, which is when the Millennium Development Goals come to an end. And in this debate, academics, researchers, scholars, politicians, corporate leaders, individuals are beginning to realize that well-being and happiness must be included as important goals. That well-being and happiness are important measures of society's true progress. And Bhutan is contributing to that debate. And I'm happy to say that our contribution is being accepted and appreciated. And I'm hopeful that in the next two years, when the United Nations will probably have a summit on the adoption of a post-2015 World Development Agenda, we will have in the lines there the pursuit of human well-being, the pursuit of the well-being for all life forms and the happiness of all human beings. Thank you.